Unemployment rates hit all-time highs since the 1930s in both Canada and the United States. Many companies are facing financial insolvency based on the industry. There's still really no wide-scale vaccine yet for the medical issue. And just last week, riots were ravaging entire cities in North America, but the stock market is up and seemingly doing better than ever. So what's going on here and why is this? Should stock market investors be worried of a potential stock market crash that might be upon us? We're going to find this out in today's video. Hey, what's going on savers and investors? I hope you're all having a great day as always. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. My name's Griffin and you can also follow me actually on Instagram at Griffin Milks. I post there pretty much on a daily basis. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a quick break from the company fundamental analysis videos to dive back into a topic that was really hot and trending only about a month and a half back in March when the stock market was in complete and total free fall. Investors were pretty much just going crazy not really sure what to do at that point and I had even made a series of videos speaking about my thoughts on what was going on in the market back then and why the stock market was being so volatile. Now fast forward almost two months later and the stock market is seemingly bulletproof to anything that's going on around it in the underlying economy and investors really just seem to be laser focused on those future earnings potentials of companies once they are fully back up and running at maximum capacity and this is translating into a v-shaped recovery of of the market indices as we're experiencing right now but is this justifiable considering the underlying economy itself which is not necessarily following that same pattern so this v-shaped recovery in the stock market right now is basically just telling us that a lot of investors have hopped back onto this optimism train and are trying to ride the wave back up all the way to the top obviously being a finance guy myself who also is a stock market investor and happens to have a youtube channel it was somewhat inevitable that i would share my thoughts on this topic right now and what I think is going to happen in the stock market and why it's reacting the way it is and I'm just going to say this right now that this video really is talking about speculation and my predictions on what might happen in the stock market and it is just that it's speculation so nothing really in this video is going to be a surefire thing because ultimately no one knows when the stock market is going to go up for an indefinite amount of time and when it's going to crash back down however if you enjoy the video at any point in time please Please take two seconds to smash the like button it really helps me out and helps me grow this channel and tells me that you're enjoying the content the way we're going to be structuring this video is first going over a recap of what happened back in february march to start this massive sell-off of financial securities and why it happened so quickly with an overview of what i personally thought was the reasoning for such a rapid decline and now as we're seeing a rapid increase in company valuations following this we'll be speaking about why the market is almost back up to par with February valuations and whether or not this is fundamentally even possible considering current macroeconomic data. And finally, I'll be sharing my thoughts on the current market and discussing what I am personally doing in my portfolio and stock market investments. All right, so let's teleport back to that February, March period where markets were at all time highs with the Dow Jones even reaching 29,551 points as of February 12th. At this point in time, optimism in the market was obviously very high for many individuals and a lot of stock market investors were really just focused on stocks like Tesla going to the moon, which by the way, even though Tesla crashed down to really low price points, it has since recovered to past those February price points. Pretty crazy. But anyways, we had just experienced the longest bull run in history and there was sort of this lingering thought that a stock market crash was upon us or at least was past due based on historical market data. So with this in mind, crazy high valuations, greed through the roof, and also somewhat fear of an impending stock market crash, what more could you ask for for the perfect recipe for a stock market crash? Well, along comes the medical issue, which quickly took the entire world by storm in the blink of an eye, and this really happened to be the straw that broke the camel's back and led us into the quickest market recession in history. The Dow Jones hit market bottom at roughly 18,000 points, down 37% in only only 39 days and this is not even comparable to any of the recent stock market crashes such as 2008 and the 2000s bubble where it took almost a year or more to yield those same results. But why did this happen in the first place and how did it materialize so quickly other than what we just spoke about? Well, I actually pinpointed it down to two main elements being a global economic shutdown as well as consumer fear. So let's quickly expand on both of those topics. First off, when the medical issue first hit the scene on a wide scale international level, 
the effects of this medical issue were somewhat unknown at the time and arguably still are to this day. However, many governments, including the Canadian government, took high precautionary measures and pretty much just shut down the entire country, put it on lockdown, and closed down business operations on a temporary basis. This is definitely not any news to you, but I just wanted to recap quickly. The issue with this is that for many companies that have a tight operating margin and or only have relatively small cash reserves, well, a temporary halt in business operations, or at least say operating your business at 10 to 20%, simply is not viable for many of these companies on a long-term basis. So out of fear and uncertainty that many of these companies would become quickly financially distressed, basically this just led to overall pessimism in the markets and ultimately led to the stock market crashing down as we experienced in March. All this to say that the medical issue resulted in massive lockdowns in countries in Europe, North America, pretty much all over the world, resulting in a huge amount of economic slowdown. Now, what happens with significant economic slowdown? Slowdown, this translates over into truncated revenue for a large amount of these companies, which has a ripple effect throughout the entire economy because these companies are then forced to dig into cash reserves in order to stay afloat. They have to cut down their employees and basically lay off a bunch of their employees, as well as reduce all of their operating costs and ultimately raise capital through issuing debt or issuing new stocks. So this was really the first issue from this entire fiasco, which happened to be then combined with the second issue leading to economic slowdown, which was fear in the market and fear in overall consumers that were locking themselves inside and pretty much just not spending nearly as much money, which had another effect on slowing the economic stimulation. To summarize, global fear combined with earnings uncertainty of many publicly traded companies, less spending, people losing their jobs, and pretty much just emotions running high throughout this entire period had led to one of the largest and quickest sell-offs in stock market history. Now with all of this in mind, before we jump into the next section, which is the reasoning behind why I believe the market has rebounded so quickly, let's just quickly cover the fact that not only two months ago, Goldman Sachs was predicting that the American GDP would be seeing some of the worst quarters in history, with Q2 of 2020 seeing a GDP decline by 34%, which is just massive and absolutely dwarfs any other quarter in history. And this was only two months ago, where nothing Nothing has really changed since then from an underlying economy standpoint. In fact, things are somewhat just as bad as before from an unemployment standpoint and the medical issue. My point being here that for most publicly traded companies in Canada and the United States, the Q2 earnings reports have yet to be released. Most of them will be releasing in August. And this basically just means that we don't yet know the actual concrete factual financial damage that this whole situation has had on the revenues of most of these companies. For some reason though, the stock market just went from absolute doomsday pessimism to a full 180 with positivity and pricing in forward-looking earnings into the stock price points. Even though we all know that the stock market is somewhat of an anxiety meter for the general population of investors that partake in the stock market and is heavily based on emotions, which is somewhat healthy to a certain standpoint, well, the amount of volatility that we're experiencing right now is definitely unprecedented and somewhat unsustainable. Even if the market is pricing in good news for most of these companies, the reality is that these companies are just that. They're companies that have employees, payrolls, clients, burn rates, and the list goes on. So if these companies are coming out and posting unfavorable results for the coming quarters, it's somewhat inevitable that this will get reflected in the share price. All right, so considering the fact that only a month and a half ago, the Dow Jones was sitting at roughly 18,590 points. And as of today's trading day, the Dow is only only down 7.4% since those high price points in February. So what really has resulted here in the stock market rebounding so rapidly and so much, it certainly isn't the underlying economy and these companies posting really great numbers. I personally believe that there's a variety of factors at play. However, I've boiled down my observation to three main points that I think are highly relevant to the situation at hand. 
The first and most important factor in all of this is the American government pumping their economy full of cash in order to stimulate business activity, have consumers pay their bills, and essentially go out shopping. Since this whole period, the American government has printed roughly 3 trillion new dollars into the economy, which has had the indirect impact of raising investor confidence and somewhat artificially propping back up the stock market. Now, other than the fact that printing 3 trillion new dollars and pumping that into the economy might seem like a lot, and it certainly is, it's actually not even enough to bring the stock market back up to those February price points. So the fact that the stock market is up almost back to those price points in February and is only down roughly 7% for the Dow Jones is definitely alarming. And another issue here is that with the government printing so much cash, this results in high amounts of inflation. And just from an actual supply and demand standpoint, every time the government prints more money, the dollars that you have in your savings account are worth less money because there's more dollars in circulation and therefore your dollar is worth less. What happens here is that investors don't want to lose a relative value of their dollars due to inflation so they're then taking their money out of their savings account where it was exposed to inflation and they're looking to park their money into investments such as the stock market or actual real estate. This actually happens to be the reason why Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, says that savers are losers. It's not necessarily that saving money is a loser mentality because the fact of the matter is you need to have a cash on hand in order to deploy into a good investment when one arises. What what he's saying here is that savers are losers because every time the federal government prints more money, well, on a relative basis, your dollar loses value. So if you just have your money sitting in a savings account every single year as the government prints more money, you are losing out due to inflation. The second point to mention leading to the stock market rebounding so rapidly is the current interest rate environment that we're seeing right now, which is entirely bottomed out in both Canada and the United States. Now, I've already covered the significance of low interest rates in multiple previous videos, so I'm not going to dive into this on a technical basis in today's video, but basically the gist of what you need to know is that when the interest rates are lower, this has the goal of stimulating the economy by allowing more people and companies to borrow money at a cheaper level. This actually leads to two outcomes though, because even though companies and people can borrow money at a cheaper rate and therefore stimulate the economy, it also has the effect of having high interest savings accounts or just savings accounts in general, having a slashed down interest rate that is paid to savers that just park their money in a savings account. So what this means is that a saver who's getting, let's say a 2% interest rate on their high interest savings account has probably received in the past couple of months, a notice from their bank saying that their high interest savings rate has been slashed down to a lower level, which is probably going to be actually under the inflation rate, especially with the amount of money that these governments are printing right now. So this gives people even more of a reason to take their money out of savings and try to park it somewhere where they're going to get a higher return on their dollar and not lose out relative value to inflation. And finally, the third main element that I believe is contributing to this market rally is basically the speed and access of information that we now have in today's society with more investors than ever engaging in stock market investing because it's pretty much just become easier than ever to have an account with either Wellsimple Trade, Robinhood, M1 Finance, Webull, whatever it might be, to just open up a brokerage account from your phone, watch some YouTube videos, and then start investing in the stock market. Now, don't get me wrong. I think that this is phenomenal and is ultimately the whole goal of my channel to help educate viewers on different financial positions as well as stock analysis. All I'm saying though is that basically with the speed of communication and how easily accessible stock market investing in, I personally think that the speed of the stock market crash in March as well as the recovery we're experiencing right now is fully correlated with the era we're living in of fast communication and cutting edge technology. With that said, this third point really just is my own opinion though. However, I think it really makes sense and brings FOMO to a whole new level because people are just glued to their phones now and can watch stocks all day every day without having to actually call up a broker or go on a more formal website in order to make trades. People can trade for free in the matter of seconds. All right, so with all this information in mind, let's now jump into the next section of the video, which is whether or not I think that this is justified and what my thoughts are on the current market environment. First off, let's not forget get the main reason why the stock market crashed in March in the first place, which was due to the whole uncertainty around the medical issue and governments basically shutting down 
the entire country and temporarily shutting down businesses. The bottom line is that since governments were worried about the masses contracting the medical issue when they were out of their house and doing some business, they basically just forced all these companies to shut down and somewhat kind of forced the market into a recession, even though before this market crashed, there was no real concrete factual reason for the market to crash as severely as it did, other than the fact that based on historical data, we were due for some form of major correction. Where I'm going with all of this is that if the medical issue is indeed as contagious as we previously thought to the point where we had to temporarily shut down a variety of businesses on a pretty selective basis, but anyways, that's another debate all in itself. Well then theoretically, we should most likely see a second wave of this whole medical issue due to the events that have transpired over the past couple of weeks with rallies going on across North America, with people being shoulder to shoulder in crowds of thousands of people where seemingly overnight, the whole social distancing thing kind of just disappeared and isn't a thing anymore. The second main element I'd like to bring up here is the current unemployment rate in both Canada and the United States, which honestly is quite alarming considering the current stock market trend, because we have to remember here that a company is a company and they have customers and these companies are relying on the general public to buy their products and services in order to generate revenue. Now, even though some companies like say Air Canada have stated that they are only temporarily laying off employees, well, the reality is that if their revenues don't increase over the next couple of months, there is just no fiscal angle where bringing back thousands of employees makes sense based on the current cash position and balance sheet of the company. Now, obviously, this is just one example of a company. However, the fact of the matter is that 14% unemployment rate in both Canada and the United States is going to result in a lot of people not having nearly as much disposable income as only a couple months back even to spend on luxuries that aren't their base necessities for at least the foreseeable future. And this is in addition to the fact that even before this entire fiasco, the average Canadian was only able to save $850 in the entire 2019 calendar year. So if you lose your job and on average you only have around $850 per year saved up, you're quickly going to be drying up your savings and going into further debt, which results in even less spending on luxuries like most of what these companies are offering, especially companies in the travel, airline, and hotel industries. So even after this whole medical issue is under control, jobs just aren't necessarily guaranteed for companies large and small if they're in serious financial trouble. In fact, 25,000 stores are even predicted to close in 2020, and even though most of these may not be publicly traded companies, it really showcases a larger issue at hand and many small restaurants can basically say goodbye. And finally, the third element that I'd like to speak about relating to this current stock market rally is the fact that stock prices right now are pretty much just surging exclusively based on positive investor outlook and the speculation that earnings are going to be higher than expected after this whole medical situation. So the issue with this, however, is that if you watched any of my previous videos relating to whether or not I thought the stock market would rebound in a healthy and relatively quick manner, I had mentioned that what's really going to be important for investors to keep an eye on is Q2 and Q3 earnings reports. However, Q2 and Q3 earnings reports for the most part have not yet been released by most of these companies. So for this reason, we still really don't know the actual concrete financial damage scope that has happened to the revenues and other figures for these companies. As of right now, as I'm making this video and as the stock market is surging, we're really only able to see the Q1 numbers for most of these companies, which is January through March. And for the most part, January through March is not going to be the point in time where the financial damage as a result of business shutdown and the whole medical issue will be reflected in the financial statements. Basically, what I'm saying here is that in a general market, unless a certain stock is receiving a lot of hype for a particular reason, generally speaking, the stock price goes up for a company on a gradual basis basis as the company releases positive earnings over a consistent basis. But what we're experiencing right now is that pretty much across the stock market in every single industry, company stock prices are rebounding by roughly 25 to 100% on average from those March price points. So in my opinion, Q2 and Q3 earnings releases is going to be extremely important in order for investors to really uncover at least the tip of the iceberg relating to the scope of the financial damage that this whole situation has had on the overlying economy as well as the companies in question. 
The bottom line is that based on how the stock market is currently reacting to this whole situation, it means that investors are really betting on the fact that companies will not be posting earnings as severely as previously predicted. So I really hope that that is the case and that there isn't a stock market crash that's upon us. However, it is a possibility that some of these companies, or at least a large portion of them, are going to be releasing earnings that are not nearly as positive as what investors are pricing into the market right now. Nonetheless, if you were able to get in at some really opportune price points over the past month and a half of trading, then that's fantastic. All I'm really trying to get across here is that the current market recovery is extremely quick and somewhat fragile in my opinion due to the fact that it's really only propped up on future earnings that have yet to be released. And if these earnings are not as positive as expected, things in the market could potentially turn for the worse. But again, nothing is guaranteed here. This also doesn't mean that I'm currently not investing in the stock market. I am. However, I'm just being a lot more cautious with my investments and I'm doing the proper research that needs to be conducted in order for me to feel comfortable in making a position at a price point that I feel is still justified based on the actual underlying fundamentals of the company based on a proper analysis of the balance sheet, cash flow statements, and earning statements that I conduct on every one of my positions and that for the most part I share with the audience in my company analysis videos. However, I need to make sure in order to be comfortable that the company, in my opinion, is going to make a nice return for me over the next 5, 10, 15 years over the course of time that I hold those stocks because for me, as someone who's an investor and looking to hold the stocks for a long period of time, the short-term fluctuation of the positions isn't really all that big of a deal in the big picture uh, on my positions for the long term based on my horizon of investing. The last thing that I want any investors or anyone from the audience to do is engage in somewhat of a FOMO practice where you're seeing the price of stocks shooting up and you're getting in at inopportune price points where you end up getting burn on the position because you got in at an inopportune time where the stock has already kind of topped off and it goes back down in value. That is something that I covered in my top traps video that you can check out right here if you're interested. So in conclusion, do I think another stock market crash is upon us? And if so, when would that be? And my honest answer to that is I think you guessed it. I don't really know and no one knows regardless of what they tell you. All we can really do as value investors in great companies is make sure to do a proper analysis of the company and then mitigate your risk as much as possible. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and I just want to let you in on the fact that I'm currently working on a series of different video topics. Yes, some of them relating to the stock market and specific company analysis. However, we're also going to be releasing some videos relating to a moving vlog into my new duplex that is happening at the end of the month, as well as some real estate content that I really think you're going to enjoy based on the response from the audience in one of my recent videos where I asked you whether or not you'd be interested in some real estate content. So on that note, if you're interested in watching any other my stock market related content, then make sure to check out one of the two videos that I'm overlaying right here and smash the like button. It really helps my channel grow and tells me that you enjoyed today's video. And last but not least, consider subscribing to the channel where we release videos every two to three days about stock market investing and various personal finance topics. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.